Hey, Nathan here. Welcome back to another DirectX tutorial. Last tutorial, we discussed how to draw 2D images in a PNG format using DirectX, and we use that by having a game sprite class that we created last tutorial and using the sprite and texture DirectX functionalities in order to do that. In this tutorial, we are going to clean up our main.cpp file and wrap everything up in a game class. That way, the only thing that's left on here is the most minimal version we can have that references anything game related. We want to keep this just win main and window proc and then anything as less as few references to our game as possible. Now we will need some, so we'll have to create a game class and then we'll have to initialize the game class and run the game class. But that's the most simplest version we can make in here. We want to keep this just win main and window proc and then a generate window here. All right, so let's get started. Let's create a new header file. And let's call this header file game.h. All right, so let's start coding here. If n d e f game underscore h define game underscore h and if and then game underscore h. So just the normal include guards here. Now we will need to include graphics device and we will need to include our game sprite. All right, so let's generate the class game. And the game is going to have a few functions, you know, initialize, run, update, and draw. So those would be public accessible. And we also need the constructor and destructor. Game and then tilde game. All right, game functions. It's gonna be Boolean, so we know if it has been successfully initialized or not. So bool initialize, opening parentheses, uh, we need a handle to our window so we can initialize it properly. Uh, let's just call this function void run. You can call this whatever you want. This is what we will call from our win main function. Run will call update and draw. Uh, you can call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call this run. Void update. It accepts a float game time. Void draw float game time. All right, so that's it for the functions. Now let's set up the uh, private section for our pointers. So we need a graphics device. I'm just going to call it G device. And then we need two game sprites here. Player and then player two. All right. Now let's save it, and now let's go to the CPP file. So right-click the Source Files folder and add new item. It's going to be a CPP file, and let's call this game.cpp. All right, this is where we just need to fill in all those functions we have. So we need to include game.h. All right, first up is a constructor. 
And then this is going to be empty for now. We'll fill it in later. But we're just going to make this empty for now. Now we have bool. We need to have our initialize. And it's HWND, HWND. All right, so G device is equal to new graphics device. If not G device initialize HWND and true, it is windowed mode. So if it is not initialized, we need to return false. Uh, we need to update this initialize for boolean and we'll get to that in a minute. Player is equal to new game sprite. Uh, we're going to give it a X and Y position, so 100, 200. If not player initialize, we need to pass a G device device uh, player paper.png, whatever file you want to use, and then the width and height of the image, 5886. Two closing parentheses, opening closing curly brackets, and let's do this right now. Return false. And that's G device with a capital D here. All right. So that's the first player. Now we have player two is equal to new game sprite. It's going to be 80, comma 200. If not player two initialize G device device the image you want to use. Player paper.png, the width and height of the image, two closing parentheses, opening and closing, and return false. All right, if all of those are successful, we return true. So this just determines if our game has been successfully initialized. All right, now we have our void. run function and that just calls update and draw and we need to get the game time get game time and update draw so float game time is equal to zero we're going to leave this alone for now we'll do this in a dedicated tutorial where we discuss timers and getting elapsed game time and stuff like that Update game capital U here. Game time draw game time. All right. Now the actual update and draw functions void game update float game time update our sprites and other game logic void game draw that's going to be float game time as well simple rgb value for the background so use XRGB instead of ARGB. So we're just going to copy our clearing and drawing from here. You know, simple RGB value instead of RGB. So we're going to cut this from our main.cpp 
and paste it in our game.cpp. Then save that, and now we need our destructor here. Game, uh, no void here. Game colon colon tilde game. If player delete player, player is equal to zero. If player two delete player two, player two is equal to zero. If G device delete G device G device is equal to zero. So just cleaning up all of our pointers and deleting them. All right. So we need to work on this graphics device initialize function here. So let's expand this. Let's go to graphics device here. And let's change the initialize. Uh, that's the header file for graphics device. Let's change initialize from void to boolean. B-O-O-L. Let's save that. Then let's go to graphics device.cpp. And let's change this void initialize to bool initialize. All right, now the only thing we need to check for, let's close this for now, is this here. If this is succeeded, we return true. Otherwise, we return false. So if, let's wrap this up in a not succeeded call. So if not, if not succeeded, we need to return false. So if not succeeded, return false. Otherwise, return true. All right, so let's look at game.h. That looks good. All right, now let's go to our main.cpp and get this all cleaned up. Main.cpp. I'm going to get rid of the draw and update here. Uh, window proc is fine. Generate window is fine. Generate window is fine. I'm going to get rid of these includes here, and I'm going to include game.h. Now I'm going to get rid of the update and draw declare functions here, and then the player sprites here. All right, now I'm going to get rid of the graphics device, G device, and the player here, and then the if in this player initialize here. And then I'm going to get rid of the deletes here, and then the closing bracket here, and get rid of the update and draw here. I'll hold down control, press K, hold down, press K. And while holding down control press D again, it'll readjust our coding here. All right, so let me discuss that again. So we have else all the way over here, and then we have a bracket all the way over here. If you want to readjust your coding to match everything, hold down control, press K, and you see at the bottom left it said control K was pressed, waiting for second key of chord. Still holding down control, press D. That will readjust everything so it's properly aligned. All right, so let's set up our game pointer right up here. Right above win main, we have our game pointer here. All right, so after inside the win main function, inside this if generate window block here, right after message, let's create a new game.
And then before this while true block, let's have an if block here. If game initialize, use our HWND here. So if game initialize, then we enter our while loop here. Let's hold down control, press K and then press D to readjust. Okay, so if game initialize, then we enter our loop here. Inside this else, that's where we want to update and draw our game here, but we wrap that in the generic game run function. So game run. All right, before we return message.wparam, let's delete game. All right, let's save this. Let's press F5 and see if there's any errors. It has succeeded, but it quit right away. And that is because we need to move this ending bracket before the delete game here. Again, control K D to readjust everything. Save it and then run it again. And it's still active. So that was it for this video. We just provided the most minimalistic way to reference our game inside the win main function. We did that by wrapping everything in a game class and just calling game dot game run here. Of course we need to initialize it and then if it succeeded then we enter our while loop here. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Next video let me just see what we have in store for the next tutorial. Next tutorial, we discuss updating sprites, you know, providing movement. So let me show you a sneak peek of that. So we just update our two sprites here in two different directions. And I'm holding down the title here, which will pause the game. You see him moving the title here. So that's it. For this tutorial, next tutorial, we'll discuss how to move the sprites. So I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.